<laughs> so the room seems to settle down quite nicely. So we may as well start. Um, a couple months ago, I think it was in October. Louder. Louder, whoa. I already did all my shouting on Friday in the beer event, so. But I will try. Okay, a couple months ago, I guess it was in October, I uh, stumbled across a blog post about web development uh, with Perl 5. And it started like this. Even though I'm in the thralls of Perl 6, I still do all my web development in Perl 5 because the ecology of modules is so mature. When I read this sentence, it kind of rubbed me the wrong way. Here's someone who clearly likes Perl 6, yet cannot use it for what he needs to be doing. And to me that's kind of unacceptable. I just refuse to believe that after so many people poured so much time into Perl 6, it should still not be ready for something as mundane as web development. So I set out on my quest to show that this side sentence is misguided or just plain obsolete. So where do we begin? How do we show that everything is not as bad as this blogger believes? Well, I did a little survey of modules.prol6.org and had a look at everything that at least sounded like a web framework to me. These are the results. As you can see here, it's a reasonably short list. In itself, that's not that bad. Uh, the list of actively developed web frameworks for Perl 5 is probably not that much longer. Of course, there are lots and lots and lots of failed attempts or abandoned frameworks on CPAN. This raises the second question. To which category do these belong? To answer this question, I had a look at the date of the last commit to the repositories. Now keep in mind that the very first stable release of Perl 6 as a language was in December uh, 2015. And in the couple of months before this release, we really rushed in a lot of semantic changes that we knew we had to get in before we were ready to commit to a stable version of the language. So everything that has not seen any commits in these months or afterwards is probably bit rotted or really incredibly lucky. Um, for example, Web App, Bay, uh, Web App Ballet claims that it's going to be merged with Bailador in the near future. <laughs> now I got curious and had a look about when the sentence was added to the documentation. Any guesses? <laughs> it's not that bad, you know. It's March 2013. It hasn't happened yet. Uh, I'm not sure if it will ever happen. But with this filter applied, we are left with three contenders. So, no, 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 no. Let's not jump to conclusions here. St three can still be a very decent pool to choose from. We'll just have a look. The first one is Crust. Crust is, in short, a PSGI implementation in Perl 6. It's a glue between the web server and the web framework itself. Um, it lets us centralize code for supporting different ways of connecting our application to a web server, like uh, fast CGI or being run behind the front-end proxy. Though certainly very useful, it's probably not the very first thing that uh, you'll be looking for. But let's keep it in mind for now. We'll come back to it later. Web can be considered one level above Crust in the stack. It gives you requests and response objects and the dispatcher. Not luxurious, but sounds like at least a good start. Except for that it apparently does not even support fancy newfangled features like file uploads. <laughs> And there's another thing uh, missing that I'd consider a somewhat essential part, um, and I will come back to this later. For now, let's move on to the first thing that you should have considered. Bailador is pretty much 
a very straightforward port of Dancer 2 Pearl 6. <coughs> it is lightweight, it is being actively developed, though somewhat slowly, and it, it brings much of what uh, you would expect from a web framework. It's a little thin on the documentation and on examples, but since it's a very straightforward port of Dancer, I could just implement the uh, Dancer tutorial example application in Bailador, just to see how, how well it does. The program I'm talking about is this kind of a minimalistic block. You can log in, block something inside full, and it's, this gets then displayed on the front page. Now, Bailador does not come with any kind of uh, built-in configuration system. So first off, I wrote an extremely sophisticated one, which you can see here. Well, at least it lets me stick very closely to the original example. Now, here's a bit of database setup code. It's nothing special. Do I have to mention that I very much like how DBI-ish uses named parameters instead of parsing some obscure connection string? Though it's kind of odd that the SQLite driver doesn't cope too well with being uh, given a proper I.O. path object. So I have to stringify the path before giving it, but okay. Now, if you know a bit of Dancer, you're going to feel right at home here. This is pretty much the same as you would write in Perl 5. We define a route for our GET requests to the root and give Baylor though a code block to execute when the route matches. Um, again, DBI's interface looks quite a bit cleaner than good old DBI to me. That's the, the advantage of being able to start over with a fresh new code base. The login handler seems to be a good example for how to access parameters, sessions, and redirects. Very straightforward, easy to use, very familiar from Dancer. So, have I convinced you yet that Perl 6 is absolutely ready for web development? Who have you noticed uh, the little interesting bit in the last line here? Instead of just calling the template function as you would do in Dancer, I pass the result to a function called layout. Why is that? Well, Baylor, though, has simply hasn't seen as much development as Dancer or Modulicious. So again, it has uh, no built-in support for layout templates or hooks. So I had to write a little helper. Nothing bad, really. Um, there's also no facility to construct URIs yet. Um, so for now, a little example application cannot be run with the path prefix. And this is also a part that I consider very much mis missing from web. Again, probably not a deal breaker. It just shows that Bailador is not as mature a framework as Dancer or Modulicious. Now, wait a minute. Do you remember Crust, the PSGI framework for Perl 6? Well, the cool thing about PSGI is that it allows for sharing so-called middlewares between applications and frameworks. There are tons of middlewares, from support for running behind a front-end proxy to awesome debug panels and I don't know what else. So in theory, you could have the same with Crust, but middlewares have yet to appear. Nevertheless, Crust is certainly a good base, so we may as well give it a try. The documentation makes this look much more complicated than it actually is. This tiny PSGI file is all that's needed to bring Crust and Bailador together. So we could give it a try. As I have much extra time, I can do a little live demo here. OK, it starts. That's a good sign. <coughs> and the application is running. Nice. So, yeah, that's it. We can go forward, be heroes, write awesome middlewares. But uh, first off, uh, I'm going to show you the uh, login thingy. Wow. 
so. Oh no, it. Now you're seeing my super secret password. Oh. Well, this is the error message, and you know, everyone has a point where she just gives up. The question is only where exactly this point is. And it will probably depend on if you're just playing around with this like I have, or you need to earn some hard currency with this. So is there no hope? Are, they, are we really stuck with the choice between a mature ecology of modules and the devotion to our new love? Well, screw it. I want to have both. If Dancer 2 is where the development is and the features are, then Dancer 2 I will use. <laughs> now this is kind of like the canonical Hello World example in Dancer 2, taken straight out of its tutorial. Damn it! <laughs> okay. It's probably updated by now, but okay. It's probably not looking mu that much different. Um, okay, but if I were to try this, it would explode again. And why is that? Well, the documentation doesn't tell you this, but Dancer 2 actually passes the application object to your handler routine. Since Perl 6 does have proper subroutine signatures integrated in the language, it expects you to, to declare those parameters that are passed to your code. So it would rightfully complain that no parameters were declared, but passed in anyway. So what could we do to make Perl 6 happy? We could do it like this. Um, we declare the, the parameter, but this, this is undocumented and it would be tedious and look less pretty. And we cannot have that, can we? Now luckily, Tachik, who first tried this, found a really pretty way around that. In Perl 6, code blocks are not just syntactic elements, but first-class objects. You can think of subroutines as code blocks with explicit signatures. Naked code blo blocks have a default signature um, that is used to create the topic variable, do dollar underscore. Um, and one argument is exactly what we need to get around this. Um, now let's have a look at how well we do at the original da dancer example I ported to Belado. I'm not going to show you the full source code. That would mostly just be boring code like this. Interesting bits may be to point out uh, that I do stick with the tutorial closely. So I use Perl 5's DBI and template toolkit. Also one of the little improvements of Perl 6 that matters so much, at least to me in my daily life as a programmer, is that we have file specs functionality integrated into the language. So you can just use the tempdir variable and its convenient child method for platform independent generation of the path to a good temp directory. As I mentioned, I just <laughs> use uh, DBI, which all of you should know really. So this will look very familiar to you, but also a little strange. First of all, there's no undef anymore. Even undefined, types, uh, undefined values are typed in Perl 6. So the closest thing to a plain undef is an undefined any, which is what I passed to uh, the connect method here. Now, what the hell is this dollar hash thingy? Any ideas? No, it's, it's an itemized hash. It's a hash that should be treated like a single item. And that's the most important part, not interpolated into the argument list of the method call. It's a bit like taking a, a reference in Perl 5, except that we have, don't have references anymore or that everything is by reference, depending on the way you look at it. Now, lastly, this sh code shows how to access global Perl 5 variables. 
in Perl 6, which is exactly like in Perl 5 itself. If you try this at home and uh, it doesn't work that way, you have a version of inline Perl 5 installed that's uh, been written before this weekend. Just to let you know. <laughs> <laughs> the old way was not as pretty and uh, I just hate showing things that are not pretty in my slides, so I had to fix it. On to a more mundane piece of code, the uh, before template render hook. As you probably know better than me, this is just a sub that gets past a hash into which it can set some values. Now, please, a quick show of hands. How many of you people have forgotten the semicolon after the closing curly in code like this? It happens to me all the time in Perl 5, which is why I'm so glad that Perl 6 has fixed this for us. You don't need it anymore. The compiler is smart enough to guess what you actually meant, which is the statement ends there. Now, this is the heart of our program, the code that actually delivers the page. This, the one specialty here is this map thingy. Now, what's that? Well, when we pass a hash from Perl 6 to Perl 5, what uh, the thing in the background does is it ties a Perl 5 hash so all the access is redirected to the Perl 6 hash. Now, if this sounds slow, you're spot on. Um, it's so slow that it's very visible in benchmarks. Now, a map is an, an immutable hash. And since it's immutable, since we know it cannot ever be changed anymore, we get by with just copying it to a plain Perl 5 hash. So this is much faster, and uh, Lancer accesses this hash a lot. So this is a little way to uh, really speed it up. The final piece of Lancer code I'm going to show is this bit. There's nothing out of the ordinary here. In fact, it's actually a little bit closer to what the Lancer documentation suggests than the tutorial itself. I'm talking about using the body parameters. Um, I think you call it key keywords. Yeah. Um, other than this being the recommended way anyway, there's a reason for this deviation. And this reason is the param keyword is context sensitive. It behaves different in list context than in scalar context. Now this is a tricky bit of the language that Perl 6 doesn't have anymore. There's no distinction between call contexts anymore. So there's also no way to communicate to the Perl 5 function uh, in which uh, context it is called. So what we do is we call every function in list context because it's the most general one. In almost every case it will just play in work. Now, yeah. As I said, in Perl 6, uh, we don't have this distinction anymore. Now, all this switching between Perl 5 and Perl 6 must surely cost a lot of performance. But how much? Well, I benchmarked the little block application and found that it's actually doing quite fine. 170 requests per second on my laptop is surely enough for many websites. Uh, in fact, I think most websites out there see far less traffic than that. For comparison, I tried the same with Bailador and was quite <coughs> stunned. I, I didn't exact, expect stellar performance, but 240 milliseconds for a simple website like that for a single request, that's, that's kind of embarrassing, really. Um, I was sure that I have made some mistakes, so I dug a little into it, and I found out that template mojo, which Bailador uses, uses a Perl 6 grammar to parse the templates, and Perl 6 grammars are not fast. What it does then is it uh, generates Perl 6 code and then evals this code. Now, no one ever expected Perl 6 to compile fast. It's, it's a humongously complex language, and we are, we are working hard on getting it fast at runtime, but compile time is, is way much beyond that. 
So doing this double parse for every single request is pretty much the slowest thing you could do. The good news is that it's fixable and it's trivially fixable. I mean, you just have to cache the generated subroutine. And uh, template Mojo actually has such a cache, but Bailador uses it in a way that it cannot use it because it generates uh, a new template object every request. It's fixable, it's quite simple. It's, it's just a symptom of, of Bailador and Perl 6 being relatively new. Next, I had a look at Mojolicious. As Mojolicious is quite similar to Dancer, the results were quite similar as well. So instead of a boring introduction, I will just focus on a couple of stumbling blocks I discovered when porting all the tutorial examples. This hello world should be pretty much exactly what you expected. Um, as it happened to me, just note this space before uh, the, um, after the sub and before the, the opening parenthesis. If you leave out the space in there, and I should have used another font to make it more clear, um, Perl 6 will think that you will want to call a sub called sub and give you a very confusing error message about $C not being declared. But other than that, if you do it correctly, it's, it just works like this. Now, it would be really cool if this example worked as shown, uh, because Modulicious supports storing templates and static files in the data section um, of your program. Um, but Perl 6 doesn't have this uh, data um, file handle. Instead, uh, this is integrated into pod. So we have the finish pod command, which just tells it, well, Perl 6 stops here. And the rest is, yeah, data. Now, as I have a little extra time, I can um, do a little side story. This does not work yet. But just a question to the audience, how would you implement this? In Perl 5, you have this magic data file handle. And in Perl 6, we have, well, a pod command. Any ideas? Well, my first thought would be, yes, OK, we, we probably have to create this file handle, probably give it a memory buffer. Now, the ni and one of the nice things about Perl 6 is that um, we have lots and lots of introspection features. So you can also actually very simply access all the pods in your uh, program from within the program. There are uh, magic variables uh, like uh, dollar equals finish contains all this data. So we have to create a file handle backed by a string, and we have a string. So why have I not yet implemented this? I hate showing things that don't work. Now it turns out the really tricky part is the timing. Because um, you have this use Mojolicious light from Perl 5 up there. This is where... Um, Mojolicious is loaded from Perl 5. This is where all the, uh, the initialization code runs. It's at begin time, because use is a begin time construct. The finish pod command has not even been parsed yet. So I'm not sure where exactly to put it in, in the program flow. If you have any of you have any idea about this, I'd be glad. So what you do to get around this is you put this in a proper template file, which is what you should do anyway, at least to get the proper syntax highlighting for this code. Um, when I prepared the example to show how to give a route a name, I stumbled over another subtle difference between Perl 5 and Perl 6. In Perl 6, the fat comma operator I use up there, is, is, not long, uh, is no longer just a fancy way to spell a comma. It's an operator that creates a pair object. A pair is just a key and a value. 
Now if you chain those fat commas, you create a nested pair structure with a pair that has a, another pair as a value. And Motrilicious gets quite confused if it sees that. So instead of having a, another fat comma there just because it looks pretty, just use the comma. Now this is the very first example that really, really doesn't work. Because right now it's unfortunately impossible to pass a regular expression from Perl 6 to Perl 5. I actually have a, a patch that implements the support. Uh, just need to clean it up and uh, finish it. Unfortunately, it would still not be enough. Because what Motrilicious does is it takes this regular expression, it stringifies it, and then includes the string inside another regular expression for the dispatch. And the way I implemented the support is um, to create a Perl 5 regex that really just has a code block inside, which can then delegate to the Perl 6 regex, which tells it should you match or not. And this code block, of course, does not stringify to anything sensible. <laughs> so I think there's a way around it. I have found ways around any of the uh, problems I had so far, but it's going to take some time. What does work, on the other hand, is WebSockets. And I just can't help but find this incredibly cool. And if you look at this, there's really nothing special you have to do. It just works like this, like documented. Now, for something that looks a bit different than the last three frameworks, Catalyst is an interesting candidate. Catalyst puts a bit more pressure on you to stick to an MVC architecture. It automatically loads your um, module view and controller modules. And of course, it expects those to be written in Perl 5. It even goes a step further and generates the boilerplate code for you. And this is code that we probably better leave just as it is, so I won't waste much time on it. The far more interesting question is, how do we get our Perl 6 code into there? The answer is, by declaring that the rest of the file is written in Perl 6. Everything from the use v6 inline line up there is just plain old uh, Perl 6 code. We have an index method with appropriate catalyst attributes, making the method a catalyst action. Of course, we get past the context object and we can call methods on it. And we can use the usual methods to get our, our job done. This pretty much works out of the box, except for the catalyst attributes. And I was quite surpri surprised that Stephen Little did not come up with this example for attributes because it's, it's the place where I've seen it, them used most, but okay. Um, like I said, in Perl uh, 6 we don't have subroutine attributes. We have traits instead. Now traits can, for example, be a convenient way to add a role to a method object. Because even methods like code blocks and everything else are really proper objects in Perl 6. For a catalyst action, we want to uh, mix in the Perl the inline Perl 5, Perl 5 attributes role, because I suck at naming. And because I suck at naming, this role provides an attributes attribute, <laughs> which is just a list of attributes to apply to the Perl 5 wrapper um, that gets generated for our inline Perl 6 uh, methods. Now, this little helper method, the uh, catalyst x Perl 6 component Perl 5 attributes, contains um, two more trait mode functions for uh, supporting the args and action class attributes, but they lo look pretty much exactly like this code, so that's it. And this is really all you should have to know and use to be able to use Catalyst in a Perl 6 project, which is quite cool. And now I know what's been bothering me about the sentence that haunted us so far. It just takes two really tiny changes for me to be able to make peace with it. Because even though it's certainly fun building a new web framework, 
I sometimes just need the reliable tools I know and I'm so familiar with. And luckily, they're still there for me. Now, the question with which I haven't touched yet is, why would I want to? Why would I want to leave the familiar territory and venture forth into the unknown? Well, for some, the answer would be, exactly! Because that's what I want to do. I want to explore. Well, some will be attracted by the opportunity to, to carve out a name for yourself, to become the Sebastian Riedel for the Pearl 6 world. Others will simply feel that Pearl 6 as a language is incredibly well suited for web tasks. For example, thanks to emoticons, Unicode is huge right now, and Pearl 6 is at the forefront of Unicode. And of course, having uh, Having the gradual type support, uh, Perl 6 covers a sweet spot between um, type support that catches so many stupid errors we all make, uh, but not too much type support so it would get in the way like I experienced with Java and web development, which sucks. And of course, having good uh, parallelism and concurrency support in the language Let's us finally move into this day and age regarding the use of our computing power. So while the solutions I've shown you today will not get you there immediately, they will be a good first step into that direction. Thank you. Any questions, please? There's at least one question that I'm extremely surprised that does not come. You know whether Prancer is still a thing? Prancer? Ah, the, the name rings a bell, but it must be so old. Jeff Bauer's new framework in the process. Yeah. Which is like the answer of the new Zelda. I haven't, I haven't seen him uh, talk about it for quite a while, so it's probably somewhere out there. I just want to have the stack trace you've got with Bailador, please. L later, maybe. Yeah. This one. Just, uh, I, I want to fix it, you know? Yeah, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> maybe maybe you could paste the whole at Git or something? Yeah, I can tr yeah. certainly do, yeah. Um, the question I'm surprised that I've not heard is, um, I've shown some performance statistics um, somewhere. Yeah, we have uh, Dancer 2 via uh, Perl 6 and Bailador, but how does it compare to the original Dancer in Perl 5? Um, the reason why I haven't put it up in the slide is that I don't have the exact numbers anymore. I somehow forgot to write them down. But I seem to remember that um, the Perl 6-ish version is about 4.7 times slower than the original Perl 5 version. Which sounds like a lot, but on the other hand, one or two milliseconds per page window is not that bad. And um, the example is, is very small and <coughs> Uh, we're measuring probably um, almost only the overhead. And in a normal web application, you would do much more than just do a single database query with two results and render them in a trivial way. So I, I guess 4.7 times slowdown is, is the upper boundary of what you would see. But someone will have to write a large application so we know it. Please. Is it single yes. Well, that's a good question. <laughs> Any other questions? Then we may have a short break. Thank you. Thank you.